Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Coast to the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown lives in San Francisco. You're really infected out there now, aren't you? I guess the numbers are going crazy. And uh, as our governor uh, tells us all to wear a mask while he has a wild dinner party with no masks. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, you know, as uh, I used to think the world of Gavin Newsom, especially because he was the guy who who pretty much started the whole thing about gay marriage. He made it legal in San Francisco. It was the first city to do it. Right. And and that set a whole thing in motion where finally now gay marriage is accepted in most parts of the country, same-sex marriage. Uh, um, in fact, I wanted to marry... Remember, uh, Albert was my producer here in New York, and uh, we actually wanted to go down and get married at City Hall. <laughs> now, we aren't gay. And when people said to us, but you're not gay, we're saying, so there's a limit to this same-sex marriage thing? You know, if if he and I marry, because I wasn't married at the time, if he and I marry, uh, it'll all be kind of like, uh, you know, we'll be able to get certain advantages, like tax advantages and things like that that yeah. married couples get. So we're and we actually were going to go down and get married. We uh, they had a, a drawing for the uh, five hundred people to have marriages, uh, same sex marriages, on the first day, and we made the cut. And Sirius wouldn't back us on it, you know. So we had to not do it. But. Well, I'd, li- I'd like to know who the first gay couple that got divorced were. <laughs> I think it was a lesbian couple up in like Connecticut or someplace like that. I can't remember, <laughs> but no, it, it was true. They got they got married and then uh, they got divorced. Yeah, which usually marriage does lead to divorce in almost every case. You have to consider. I think that. at least a third now. Isn't uh, it? Well, no, what I'm saying is you got to get married before you can get divorced. So I suppose it leads to divorce. You know, as life leads to death. Yeah. Yeah, I you know I was always against uh, same sex marriage, and people say why, and I said because I don't want it for me, you know I don't wish it on my worst enemy. Uh, oh, that's my, my opinion. Is I don't think I think marriage should be banned. I think if people want to get together and make their own unions, let them go. Yeah, and define and define what that union is. Not have society say, well, you you can't do this and you can't do that and blah 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 and so on. Everybody should define the define you know. They should define their own hell, okay? Yes. I saw a lawyer. This is before gay marriage was a big deal. He just talked about marriage laws in general. He said they vary by state, but it, some of them are so complicated, most people have no idea what they're getting into when they get married. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, you know, it, what it is is it's the worst contract you can sign, Okay. Uh, because it, it's just, it has no, uh, you know, it just has this, these strictures. That's why a lot of people go out and get these prenuptials, because those will supersede the marriage contract, mm-hmm. which is just a really bad contract. You don't want to sign that on your own. You want you want some definition of what happens if it doesn't work out. Now, you don't want to think it's not going to work out, and you don't like to think in those terms, but you've got to protect your future as well. You know, it, it, it. You're right. You know, there's just so many <laughs> reasons not yeah. to get married. I got married this time because, uh, you know, I enjoyed her company, and I figured we could live together. I mean, it's lasted. You know, mm-hmm. we we yell and scream at each other, but it's lasted. Yeah, you actually seem very happy. Well, I'm it's, happy. Nobody's happy when they're married. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm content. You, know? you ever have fights? Well, we often look at each other and go, well, thank God, at least during this whole COVID thing, we have each other. You know, because some people, she knows, don't have anybody. 
And so they've been spending all these t- all this time indoors alone. You know, so uh, we look at that as a mitzvah. But yeah, there's, gotta be a, there's gotta be a lot of horny people out there. <laughs> but I've got this. I got this COVID fatigue big time now. You know, I'm 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 waking up every day. I'm lightheaded. Uh, uh, I don't have a temperature. I take my temperature constantly. I've got one of those little guns you put to your forehead, uh, and and then I've also got two different thermometers. And I will try each and every one of them to see that I don't go over uh, 98.6. You know, and I'm fine, you know. So I think it's COVID, uh, COVID fatigue, which I think in some ways is the own disease. But how are you dealing with all of this? I, you know, I told you I don't really fear the disease. I'll probably, I'll probably get it and die. But uh, Elon Musk has taken the test Four times, got two positives, two negatives. So I don't know how accurate this stuff is, you know? Well, I, I think there is a variance there. You know, just because you, if you get a positive, you probably should go right back and get another one. And if you get two positives in a row, you can figure, well, you know, you've got, you've got, you got a positive. But then I want to know, my question is, like, you haven't taken the test, have you? No. no. And I've taken it by proxy. Uh, when I say that, that's because Marjorie, because she had to have several procedures done. Every time she had a procedure done, she had to go get a COVID test. All right. And uh, every time she's, you know, been negative. All right. So I assume by proxy that I, oh, there goes my, that's my phone. Hold on a second. That's a, that's my watch going off. Um, I assume that by proxy, I don't have it. You know, I think that's a safe assumption. Yeah, I've uh, I know a few people have gotten it. Uh, yeah, one one woman I know said she was just felt really tired for two weeks. And that was it. Really? Yeah. Huh. And the, and uh, yeah, some people get it uh, get it just like that. You know, I'm thinking maybe all the reason I'm tired is maybe I have uh, I have had COVID. And uh, this is the aftermath, you know. Could be. I don't know, you know. Uh, but Marjorie, uh, you know, has come out, has tested the negative five times, I think. Jesus. So, I mean, if if she had it, if if she had, if I had it, she'd get it. Okay? There's no question about it. It's that transmissible, especially between two people sleep in the same bed together, you know. Yeah, that would do it. That would do it. So, you know, I mean, maybe people are saying, that's a false assumption, you should go get a test too. But then suppose mine comes out positive and hers comes out negative, that makes no sense at all, you know. So I, and I don't know what the advantages are to knowing that it's positive. I mean, you've either got it or you don't have it. Yeah, so. Uh, so but, what are you going to do? And it uh, seems, like seems like the numbers were nationwide are going crazy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is recorded before Thanksgiving, although it's going to be played after Thanksgiving. But let me ask you, are you planning anything for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I am not. Uh, it's not, uh, I don't know, not one of my favorite holidays. But uh... oh, it's, it's my favorite holiday. Really? I, yeah, because it's it's non-religious, you know? And it, it, it is. And, and this, I was... And there's no pressure on it. It's not like Christmas where you got to buy presents for people. I was traumatized on Thanksgiving in 1960. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Why? Was the turkey infected? <laughs> the turkey, you know, but uh, my grandparents had come down, and they were, uh, just, I, maybe I've told you this, they were staunch conservatives. My parents were liberal, and they had voted. It was right after the Kennedy election. Mm-hmm. My parents had voted for Kennedy, and they said, whatever you do, don't tell Grandma we voted for Kennedy. So I, was somehow, I must have flown out of my mouth as soon as they got there, which started a wild fight. And uh, it got so bad, my grandmother said to my father, you're no longer my son, and she left. <laughs> With my, my grandfather said, I'm sorry, but we got to go. And she, so they left. My mother was so pissed off, she took the turkey, opened the back door, and threw it out in the yard. <laughs> 
We had a white Persian cat named Mike who pounced on a turkey and proceeded. He ate this thing like for 24 hours. And yeah. he, couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't move for two days. And that's what I remember about Thanksgiving. So. I'm, I, you know, I wasn't going to bring up Thanksgiving because that was last week when this is being played. But it was worth it for that story. <laughs> that's something Gene Shepard would have written about. Really? <laughs> I just remember <laughs> It just people get so mad over politics. It was just uh, it was horrifying. So this is the the era we're living in now is nothing new. I just think social media brings us more out. But oh, I, people I, have always been crazy over politics. Oh, I think if we want to talk about an ugly time, the whole uh, you know the whole uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, communist witch hunts back yeah. in the fifties were just. I I lived through that. That was horrible. That was just that sounds terrible. horrifying, and it sounds kind of similar to what's being done now from uh, with the cancel culture. And yeah, but that. but it wasn't. This isn't as bad because that one people were losing jobs like crazy. I mean, you know, you if you were, they called you a communist in show business, and you made this list, you didn't work. Yeah. There are many writers got what was the Woody Allen movie, the uh, the front, the front. That in fact, the front was written by. Somebody who had been blacklisted, directed by somebody who had been blacklisted, and most of the people in the film acting had been blacklisted actors. The only one who wasn't blacklisted was Woody Allen because he was too young. <laughs> yeah. Zero Mostel was in that, right? Yep, he had been blacklisted. Uh, you know, it, it, but uh, that's a great film. If anybody can lay their hands on it, it's just a great film because it, it talks about. One of my favorite topics, which is that whole period of time when there were there, there was there was this thing called uh, red channels, and it was a uh, a pamphlet that listed people who had been uh, were being blacklisted, and every TV executive in the country in his desk had a copy of red channels, and if somebody was coming in looking for a job, they would thumb through the pages and see if they were there. And if they were there, sorry, uh, we don't have a job for you. And I think many actors had just, apparently everyone toyed with the Communist Party and the Depression, so uh, that kind of hung on them for the rest what, of their lives. Well, here's the interesting thing. You ask why something like a magazine, like a little pamphlet like Red Channels could have so much influence. Um, the reason it had so much influence is because when they uh, first uh, when it first came out, it was produced by a guy who owned a lot of supermarkets on the East Coast, and basically it was just a list of people. If they were working on your show, he wouldn't advertise on it. So that's oh, okay. that's why they relied on it. And eventually, he got sued. He got the living daylight suit out of him. Um, guy by the name of Louis Neiser, great lawyer, went after him. And got the largest legal settlement at that time, about $3 million, against this guy and put him out of business. And Red Channels was effectively cut off at the knees. But, you know, what a story, you know. And what, I never what, heard that. It is a great yeah, story. Yeah, what went on back in the day was, you know, if you think it's bad now, you know, with all the Me Too and the stuff like that that puts people out of work, you should go back to those days of the... Uh, uh, of the communist uh, witch hunts. And the front shows exactly what that was about. You know, if you would come in and name names, which made you a snitch, okay, uh, you were okay. You were then taken off the list. Well, you know, everybody, a lot of people were communists back in the day, back in the 30s, because you had a very bad um, uh, depression. And yeah. people looked upon communism as maybe one of the ways you could solve this problem. So they fl flirted with it for a while. And like Zero Mostel said in the movie, you know, I just did it to get laid. <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't know that it was going to come back and haunt me like this. You know, so. <laughs> so well, who uh, didn't Bogart have not a uh, he didn't name names that he didn't really stand up too well, as I recall. Well, no, he, he, he along with Lauren Bacall and a bunch of other uh, actors, went to Washington, D.C. to protest the House on american Activities Subcommittee. 
Oh, okay. I thought yeah. he didn't come across well. Maybe I'm wrong. No, it, it wasn't that he didn't come. But they, there were certain actors who were suspect and fought against it, and they didn't go against them because they were such big money earners in Hollywood that you know money talks and nobody walks. You know, so um, uh, they survived it, but it was terrible. Just terrible. What a terrible time. So if, if you think they're bad now, we we've always been a shitty country. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, overrated <laughs> mainly overrated hey listen uh let's uh take a break now and we'll come back and see you next week how's that yeah and don't throw that turkey out the back door no we won't ladies and gentlemen the lovely and attractive you always love him larry bubbles brown bye larry bye alex now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? Oh, God. I'm, I'm really, I don't know. I just have not been feeling well lately. And yet, all I am is lightheaded. That's it, you know? And uh, uh, today, I... Uh, uh, you know, I just have been feeling, ugh. Uh, I, I really don't know what this is. And it's, 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 you know, it's nothing I can put my finger on. It's not, I don't have any pains or aches or, you know, I'm not running a temperature. I'm, uh, uh, you know, I just feel, ugh. So I, 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 maybe I'm, I'm the poster child for COVID. Maybe I should take a week off, something like that, you know. Maybe I should take several weeks off. Well, we have Christmas coming up. If I can make it to Christmas, we'll have a whole week off, more than that, a week and a day or something like that. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I I don't know. You know, also, I'll tell you something, and uh, I'll level with you. Uh, lately, we don't get as many people listening to this program the last couple of weeks. It's been been rather dismal I'm, and, and I begin to wonder should I be doing this could I do it like once a week and then everybody will welcome it and say hey great you know uh great to great to be uh be part of uh, your life Alex you're only on once a week I mean we do the thing on Monday and we get a very sizable audience on the Monday show at four o'clock in the afternoon and we get a very sizable amount of people calling. I mean, the last week, I think it was about 12 people or something like that. So I don't know. I'm beginning to rethink, you know, uh, about doing this thing, what, four days a week. And with the Monday thing, five days a week. So anyway, and I'm, I'm, I'm not running a temperature tonight, but it's higher than usual. So that always gets to me, too. Well, let me let people in here and we'll, we'll let them talk. Anyway, um, let me see here. As they're as they're uh, uh, assuming uh, their positions here on the panel, uh, we've got. Let's see here. Uh, who do we have? We have uh, we have uh, uh, Jeff, and we have Kevin, and we have Steve. And oh, wait a minute, Charlie Wallace hasn't joined us yet. He's got to push his button or something like that. There we go. There, here comes Charlie. Uh, I got into trouble because of you last night, Charlie. <laughs> Did you hear me, Charlie? Yeah. 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 I had to mute the uh yeah. face. I mean, uh, yeah, I got a th I got a thing after the show that said that I can't I can't be seen in certain countries because we played that song last night. People who died <laughs> to introduce you. Okay. Yeah. And um uh, I do you know I think what countries? Oh yeah, here are the countries I can't be in because of the playing that last night. Uh, they won't wow. play it in North Korea. <laughs> they won't play okay. it in, uh, where else was it? There was some other place kind of like North Korea. South Korea won't play it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty terrible uh, that they won't, <laughs> uh, they won't do that. Let me see here. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find the Drop thing. a bomb on them. Uh, yeah, drop a goddamn bomb on them. Oh, no, I don't have any. I, they took it all off because what I did is I went on and I said, okay, mute the song. It was like 15 seconds. And they yeah. muted like... You can only get away with five seconds, right? I don't know if you can get what you can get away with because what happened was while I was playing the music, it, 
it uh, I, it blanked it out, but it didn't blank some of the music out when I was talking over it at the beginning and talking over it at the end. All right, so I don't. Know. I hate these people. I really do. I don't know why am I making the money? <laughs> like I'm making the money. Why am I? Them if they can't take a joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so and tonight I'm just lightheaded like crazy and. Uh, last night I was feeling pretty. Last couple of nights I've been feeling pretty good, actually, to tell you the truth. And then today I just felt like crap, and I I don't know what it is. I it with today it was raining in New York, and I think that had something to do with it. You know, it kind of like makes you all kind of woozy and and things like that. So anyway, <laughs> and I don't have a cough, folks. That was just somehow. Something I drank here. Anyway, how is everybody tonight? Um, okay, well, that's nice to know. Uh, how how you doing, Josh? I'm doing pretty pretty good. How are you doing? Yeah. What are you always looking at when you're looking at the uh, at your iPhone? Well, I don't have an iPhone, but what is that? Right now, I'm Twitter. Twitter. What's that? You're on Twitter. Twitter. No, what are you what are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, Twitter. Yeah, what, what what do you look at on Twitter? Naked ladies. Well, I mean, yeah. I follow a lot of people, but uh, I follow a lot, a lot of historians or professors, and oh, there's really? just one that I follow that just put a old picture out from the 1918 flu epidemic with a school. And on the blackboard, it was written, How to Avoid Influenza, Gargle Daily. And it's a picture of all the kids gargling, I don't know, I guess water or something. I don't know. Why Why didn't we funny. add gargling to our thing now? I guess gargling didn't work, huh? But, you know, even in 1918, they were able to get people to wear a mask. I mean, there's two other people here with kids wearing masks, too. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want to hold it up to the screen. but Yeah. I don't think that really works. Yeah, and the, every, everybody wore masks. Good Nobody laugh. even questioned yeah. it, you know. Yeah. They didn't want to die. People now have a death wish. Oh, we'll have, invite the people over for Thanksgiving. Hell, it'll be our last Thanksgiving, okay? You know. I'd rather have our liberties, damn it. Yeah, I'd rather be able to eat a turkey. Uh, <laughs> I want to drive my pickup truck with a flag in the back, God damn it. Yep, yep. So I, I don't, you know, who knows who gets it? You know, I don't get it. Um, I'm trying to, still trying to figure out why people are the way they are. Uh, what do, what do you see out there, Steve? You're out on the road. Do you see a lot of people wearing masks or are they kind of like being assholes? Uh, I see a lot of them wearing masks. I see the odd one not. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, was, I guess same as anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. how's mask wearing down in Texas, Charlie? <laughs> it's non-existent unless you go into a grocery store. Really? Yeah. You people, walk around people, outside. Nobody's got a damn mask. People are on. dying at the rate they're dying in Texas, yeah. and they're not wearing masks. That's why we're dying like that. It's because people won't wear masks. Well, I saw what the mayor of El Paso the other day, and he said it was horrible in El Paso. Yeah, one of the hottest spots in the country. Yeah, yeah. Boy. Well, they're only dying because they have COVID, and they only have COVID because you tested them and you told them they have COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If it's, they didn't get tested and told they had COVID, and then they didn't have COVID, they wouldn't well, die. If they weren't tested. I'm just talking facts. But they died. But they died. We wouldn't know they died of COVID, so they didn't die of COVID. Right. They're just dead. Boy, They're how many more dead. days till this president is gone? Huh? How many more days? 48. There's 48. people even. Oh, man. But it, who's counting? It can't uh, get here fast enough. Denying it when they're on the deathbed. What? What's this? Um, Wait a minute. There's people denying it even when they're on their deathbed. Denying it? Yeah. What? I don't have. When they got the, the friggin' hose in their mouth. It, uh, God. Ventilator. <laughs> oh God! What a stupid country. So, did anybody watch the the 
diatribe that he put up the, on Wednesday that, that Trump put up? I, I had it here. I played part of it. I, I pulled it up and I watched every 46 minutes of it and I just had a blast. What are you, uh, you glutton for punishment? I am. I am. I just I just have to do shit like that. I he don't said know this why. is I the most he, start, he started off by saying this is the most important speech I've ever had to make. And I'll tell you what you know, I, I know that if I played that for my mother-in-law, she would just put a little dinky mustache on him right there and just say, this is yeah. Hitler. Jeez. She would. She would. Was she it was, as, you know, as good Germany. as the rally that we... Was it as good as the rally that we live-tweeted, or was it... It was, uh, no, it was no. right there, except it didn't have a crowd, you know? That's it, was a different, it was a different animal, okay? Um, this was Trump... <laughs> trying to convince the American public that we've got a real problem here with a stolen election. I mean, he kept going on and on, and when you started thinking he was fading away, he'd pull up his fucking, oh. his fucking thing and say, look here, look here, at 3.42 in the morning, there was a spike, God damn it, there was a spike right there, and that's what happened. Well, see, he's, he, he, he's going by the assumption that he went to bed that night thinking he had won. Yeah. You know, because everything because because everything everybody said was going to happen did happen, and that was the votes that were counted that day were counted first, and those were people who went to the polls, and then the the write-in ballots were the ones that turned it around. So that's how you go from one thing to another because you told your people not to mail your ballot in. You got to go down to the poll on election day. And then in this speech, he starts complaining about the fact about, remember when we used to have election day? <laughs> he, in one second, he's saying he doesn't want anybody to mail in. And then the next second, he's saying we've got to go back. He says it takes too long for all the mail-in votes to be counted. And then the next second, he's saying oh, we twice. ought to go back to paper. It might take longer, but we go back to paper. What the fuck? You said just said it was going to take too long. Twice. I don't know about you, but I, I, I filled out a paper ballot. Yeah. What, what, what he was saying is everything should be paper ballots. Mm -hmm. oh, everything really goes bad. in. You go in, you do the paper, and you go home. Isn't what you but mail... Wait, wait, longer. wait a minute. Isn't what you mail in paper? Yeah, yeah. that's a paper yes. ballot. But, but do it on the spot is what he's saying. No. Okay. So have big, yeah. long lines, have people come in, get their ballots. Okay, you go in, punch your little... Chads and all that shit. So this That's is he basically about. he's a guy who wants things to be done the old way and not the new yeah, way. Yeah, go back to 1953 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when they had time to take those ballots and dump them in a river somewhere. Yeah, and there was yeah. less people to yeah. deal with. Because you know, paper, pa pa people. paper sinks pretty fast. You, you know, know what else is pretty funny is the the people that are testifying for him. Did you see those? Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, this one gal. Did you see? Did, I want to start. I want to talk to the manager. I want to talk to the manager. He, she's talking back to the, the, the hearing, the chairman of the hearing, and she's going, I signed a paper that says I'm not going to lie. Did you? <laughs> I'm going, what the fuck? And Giuliani's reaching over to her and going, hey, shut hey up, even shut Giuliani up. was going, going, stop it. She's going, no, no, don't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I've got to tell this guy something. Yeah, I'm when it's too much for Giuliani, you know you've gone overboard. She was nuts. Yeah. And I'm yeah, thinking, you know what's happening here is these people are going up there, they're spewing all their bullshit. Yeah. And they're also getting on Trump's list to pardon. Guess what? I'm on the pardon list. As soon as they spew all their shit, and they've done all that shit. Now, here's my conspiracy theory. They're going to spew all their shit. They're going to lie under oath. They're going to do all their shit. And then Trump's going to go, okay, you're pardoned. You're pardoned. Oh, you testified for me? You're pardoned. You're pardoned. You're pardoned. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, my it, 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 what I saw, you know, a lot of you people don't watch. You don't watch OAN, and you don't watch Newsmax. And if you don't, you're missing out on some pretty entertaining television. I, I know Kevin agrees with me. And today I tuned in OAN. They had an exclusive interview with guess who? Rudy Giuliani, who, who was there with his PowerPoint presentation of how this and this this host at OAN. And all I gotta admit something about OAN. Have you watched OAN, uh, uh, Kevin? Uh, once in a while. Not There's often. always a very attractive woman doing the news 
Okay. Okay? I mean, not just attractive, hot attractive, okay? So hot that you're not listening to the news, you're paying attention to her with your eyes, and with your hands, you're doing something else. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, she, they're all stupid. They're all dumb. Now, I'm not saying that women anchors are dumb. You go over to MSNBC, you got some pretty smart ones. You even go over to Fox, you got some smart ones. But over at OAN, they just hire these dumb women to sit there. So when now it's the big interview with Giuliani. That's going to be in depth with this woman. Oh, um, really? That's really what happened? Oh, isn't that terrible? Gee, our election was stolen from us. Uh, thank you very much. Very A lot of insight there. She probably had to take a shower after it because he spits all over everybody. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and and look who's here. Uh, owner is here, if you notice. <laughs> How are you, owner? Pretty good. <laughs> you know, I can change that. That's a good idea. You know I can change it, don't you? Wait a minute. Hold, yeah, hold, hold I, on I haven't figured it out, so. Oh, rename. Okay, owner. wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. I just changed it so we know who you are. Okay, there we go. I can't see. What What do you change it to? <laughs> I can't caps. see it. I have that power. You don't. Didn't, you can't see it? Just kind of move your mouse or something. Yeah, uh, move your square there. <laughs> <laughs> see, I yeah. can, I, I'm just a lot of fun, right? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Tony's calling in. Uh, let me see here. Let me. Hey, uh, I did have to ask you, Alex, before yeah. you talk about being lightheaded all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you been uh, cutting back on your sugar or no? I don't take sugar. No, 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 see, never. and that, that might be maybe you're starting to get a little bit of uh, sugar deprivation. I, I know when I was doing Adkins years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I went too long with not enough sugar i did start getting really lightheaded well i am just i got either that or it's something i don't know what it is all i know is i went to doctors and the doctors have looked at me and they've said no you don't have this problem you don't have that problem I had a blood test with my doctor for my yearly uh i'm fine there you know marjorie had more problems than i did you know and 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 yet i'm woozy and i i think it's i think it's just being indoors all the time you know, uh, well, you were indoors all the time before the COVID. No, I wasn't. For, for a short time there, I. You always complain if I leave the house, it's going to cost me at least fifty dollars. So I might as well just stay inside. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway, so I, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm just feeling, you know, not, not myself. Hello, Tony. How's your brother doing? Oh, uh, he. It was a crazy week. I, I, I got I got a little crazy note from from uh, from oh, Shecky yeah. about we your brother. We were on Pizzanitos the last two days. Uh, I'll give you the short story. My mother had her regular checkup Tuesday for Sloan's, so we went in, did the blood work. She has Sloan's. What kind of disease is that? No, I mean we went to Sloan Kettering. Oh, I see. Okay. So we did the we me and her went in. They did the blood work and everything, and then we went home. She did the televisit the next day. So my brother, Tuesday, I went in by myself with my mom. I took a taxi. Mm -hmm. So he went to the dentist. He had a loose molar, Alex, right in the back. Mm -hmm. So let me go check it out. He took a day off. All right. So me and my mother come home, and we were in and out. And he goes, what's the matter? So he's not saying that because we're not saying that to my mother. So he says, come inside. I says, what? So he goes, look at my tongue. And on his tongue on the side, it was like a white, looked like a canker sore, Alex. But it That's wasn't. probably what it was. But it wasn't out. So they said it was like an abnormal thing. So the dentist told him to go to an oral surgeon to biopsy it. All right. So he made an appointment and in Forest Hills, his dentist made it. Yeah. And the dentist took him right away, right? So he comes back and I said, what happened? He says, he didn't want me to do it. He wants me to go to the hospital. So my mother was like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't want to do a biopsy. He just he wanted to, want to do to it, Alex, in the office. He says, I don't want to do it. He says, I'd rather send you to somebody else. So my brother was automatically worried because he thought it was something, he said. So what happened? So my brother's girlfriend knows somebody in Sloan. So he called her up. Oh, hold on. She's coming in. I don't want her to hear this. <laughs> oh, my God. So okay. anyway, yeah, she'll flip out. It's nothing bad. So listen to this. So anyway, yeah, all right, Mom. So anyway, he called. His girlfriend knows somebody who works in Sloan. So she goes, 
I said, uh, I said, do you want me to call mommy's doctor, Dr. Statler? Wait a minute. She, Wait a minute. No. Hold on a second, Tony, before you go on. No yeah. hideous wallpaper right now? No, this is actually in my side room. Oh. It's kind of in flux. Okay. My All video right. game. Right. It's like I do my scanning Any, up there. Anyway, so he went to Sloan. Yeah, so what happened is the girlfriend called up Sloan because she knew a nurse there. She says, uh, tell him to come in today, right away. They'll slot him in at 1230. She'll look at it and biopsy it. Boom, right there. Yeah. All right. We didn't say nothing to my mother because I stayed home with her. But she knew something was up because I can't lie, Alex. I was all upset because I was starting to cry. My brother's like, if you cry, she's going to know something's going on. Mm-hmm. Why do they tell me these things? But I had to find out. So anyway, they go to Sloan, right? So I told my mom, says, Where, where's Greg? I thought he had to work in the city. So I thought he was off today. She's not that stupid. I said, well, I think you're going to lunch or something uh, with his girlfriend. She says, how are they going to go to lunch? There's no place open. I said, well, I don't know where the hell they Your are. Your mother's too but bright. You know where did you, where, right? where did you, where, where, she had the brains in the family, huh? Well, you, you think, <laughs> I'm the smartest one, but I'm just lazy. So anyway. You're the so smartest anyway, one, but you're just lazy. Be, right? So they go to the dots. They go, and my sister took them in with his girlfriend. So they let one of them in. So my mm-hmm. sister wanted to go up. She's all right, I'll stay down. So she got in, and when the lady looked at it right away, my, they messaged me, Alex, she knew right away looking at it and playing with it, I guess observing it. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm going to say right now, I see cancer every day. This doesn't look like cancer. But we're going to biopsy <laughs> I see cancer you. every day. This doesn't look like cancer. <laughs> she, okay. She, I was like, is she sure? <laughs> Greg says, she went to Harvard. I think she would know something. <laughs> well, you never know. So anyway, so I was there. What's the then, upshot of this? I mean, come the on. The upshot is... He did the biopsy. By the time you finish this story, your brother's going to be dead from something else. (laughs) (laughs) So basically, she says, don't worry, it's not cancer. We'll biopsy. She thinks it's hyperplexia. It's like some kind of cell. It's a basic abnormality where the cells don't form right or give you something in its diet, and then it inflamed. Like, But it can go away by itself. They want to just watch it, but it's nothing serious. So what does he do? Does he? They want to watch it. Does he he just stay around the hospital all day going... (laughs) But Alex, we told my mother. She started cursing me out. She's like, why didn't you tell me? If this was me, she would have threw them under the bus. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I so, can't lie to them. So anyway, he's okay. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what's funny? My mother got the clean. I said, I came home. My mother got the clean bill of health, Alex. All her stats. Dr. Stanley said, your mother's doing great. You know, <laughs> I tell Greg, I said, she's going to put us in the grave and not live us. <laughs> now, how old is your mother? 80. Same age as you. She's 80. She's That's 80. old. Oh, and wait a minute. better now than she ever did. By the way, I'm two weeks away from 81. Are you ready know, for that? I know, yeah, the 7th. No, the 12th. I don't think I'm going to make it, to be honest oh, you're with you. Make the it. rate I'm going, I'm not, yeah. I need a psychologist, so i got to call you. <laughs> well, Shecky's on board, and then I come over soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, he sent me the note you sent him about your brother, and I went, yeah, well, I hope was, we, I, I, was, I, I hope his brother's now. okay. You know. Yeah, it was, it was pins and needles here. He's yelling at me. What are you getting upset for? Because I'm all upset. We're halfway crying already. I really, I told my sister, I said, listen, God forbid this goes. He says, do me one favor. Just in case this is bad, I'm not joking. We were trying to joke about it. He says, there's a part of the family, Alex, that mm-hmm. I can't stand because they're so cheap. That on my father's wake, we went to an Italian restaurant. They took fucking doggy bags home. I'm still not over that. Wait a minute. It's your I father's, like wait a minute, wait a minute. It's your father's wake. Who took yeah. doggy bags home? No, the family, the cheap cousins. <laughs> they wanted extra. I'm still fucking mad about that. I'm still mad about that. I saw them taking doggy bags home. My mother's like, by the way, in case anybody like just tuned in, I want you to know that that uh, Tony is not a paid actor doing this. No, this is my real life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Alex, did you ever? I told Shaggy, did you ever see anybody take doggy bags home from a wake? No, I I bag, never have been Alex. to. A, I've never been to a wake. Yeah, I mean, whatever you can't finish. I mean, I went to some something where a person died, and then you went over to a house for some cake. Like, yeah, like I mean, I, 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 I never could understand that one because why, after a funeral, is the proper food to have cake? Mm-hmm. You know, know. Well, we had everything at the thing. We're God, I do. You say, God, I hope he dies. Then we'll have some cake. I told, yeah. We were be... joking about it. I said, you can't go. I said, well, if anything, he says, if anything happens, don't invite him to the lunch. I said, I didn't invite anybody to nothing. <laughs> I never, I'm not going to forget that, Alex, because that just bothers me. Your so life I is think. like your wallpaper. Oh, I'm going to go back in the other room now. She <laughs> yeah. I wanted to hear me cut the phone. Okay, back to the hideous wallpaper, them. folks. She can't stand them. Even my Aunt Barbara hates them. Taking fucking meatballs home. Who does this thing? <laughs>
I'm going to rip the fucking bag out of their hands and smash it on the floor. Give me that fucking bag. Hold on, we get my kids. My family's so cheap, they make sure no, there's no food left over. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I was going to say, yeah, we never have any food left over on our way. So how have you been, Jason? I've been pretty good, just working. I, I never ask you this. How's the kid? He's getting big, man. Well, they do that, you know. Yeah, he's like almost 13 years old. Ooh. He's had his first couple of big zits, and oh. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Looks like he might be starting to get a shadow on the lip. I didn't have zits too much when I was a kid, but you know what I did have? Humongous boils on my ass. <laughs> really? I would get these humongous boils on my ass. My parents would have to take me over to the... Uh, um, uh, hospital, Marin County. Oh, to to, 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 to Literally, they took a hypodermic needle and put it into the thing and then sucked out all the juice. Uh. <laughs> and this would happen to me like two, three times a year. Uh. You know, I was just this boil factory on my ass. See, anytime we had boils in my family, we have this stuff, it's called bag balm. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's, it's actually designed for cow udders. <laughs> you put that on with a Band-Aid. Next morning, that boil comes to a head and pops like nothing. You know what my mother That's used good. to use? Well, my mother used to use for, like, uh, splinters and a lot of things like that, if you couldn't get the splinter out, was Zichthyol. Black salve. Yeah. And it just sucks the whatever is in there out of there. So if you've got, like, a pimp, bad pimple, you put it on there, it's going to suck the stuff out of there. You know. What is it? Black bomb, they, some people call it. I, it's ichthyol is what it is. It's desiccated fish. Huh. Yeah. You, you put it on and seagulls follow you around the... Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> bag bomb's good shit. It is. It really is. No, yeah. bag bomb. Why don't we go back to some of that stuff? Like, you know, we, we're, we're, how are we treating COVID? Somebody gets COVID, we send them to the hospital, and they have to be put on a ventilator, and then they die if they go on a ventilator. Right? Okay. Have we thought about trying ichthyol, black bomb? <laughs> Have we thought about it? Maybe if we just, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Now I'm sounding well, like late. now I'm well, sounding like late. Trump. <laughs> yeah. Just inject some black bomb into them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or the the mushrooms, right? I saw that I saw the episode of the Brian the Brian Gumble. Isn't that good? Talking about, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, those MMA fighters that their brain starts getting beat up. They they've been trying that stuff. Pretty crazy. Yeah, they they they, they get pretty loopy. They get they and then they go into deep depressions and things like that. And they they went out and they started taking, uh, like this this drug they found in Peru was it I think, I can't even remember the name of it right now. I should have written it down because I'd like to find some. They say that was it ayahuasca. Uh, yes, ayahuasca. It's a, there's another name for it too that they initially stated, and then I looked it yeah. up, and they said ayahuasca, and this stuff is supposedly strong crap. It is. And, Do you remember what it was that Albert talked about that he did a couple of times? I think it, it's like a really good trip, but it only lasts like a half an hour. I think with with Albert, it was um, it was um, uh, menthol. Like menthol. Salvia. <laughs> no salvia. Yes. What, yes. what was that? Salvia. Oh, yeah. But that kind of yeah. disappeared all of a sudden. Nobody talks about yeah. salvia. No. No. Yeah, I was like a real quickie. Everybody was trying it, and I heard it either, you're either really, really good or bad. So I said no. Yeah, but I stuck to to other fun stuff. So. But well, <laughs> what they found, like uh, you know, I talk about uh, Ronnie that when she was dying, when she found out she. They weren't going to be able to do anything about her and that she was slowly going to be dying. She went and did a thing with uh, psilocybin. Uh, and it took away a lot of her fear of death. You know, so that's the first thing I'm heading towards if I ever find out I have a terminal disease. I think you should do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Always need your support in this life. I appreciate it. You know. Lipitor, psilocybin. Lipitor, psilocybin. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, how's everything in the truck? How's the dog tonight, Steve? Mm -hmm. Steve, how's the dog? He's sleeping. He's sleeping. He's sleeping. Rocky. Yeah. That must be nice to have a dog with you on your little trip. Yeah. I, I yeah. have to ask Steve a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Have you ever been to Chatham, Kent? 
Uh, my wife is from there. Have you ever been to, I think it's a satellite cafe. It's like the home of the Hawaiian pizza. There is where no it was invented. It, 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 really? I, I may have. Well, I, I was just curious. So I, I, I've been, that's the biggest thing I'm pissed off about, about COVID is I was going to make a vacation to go over there. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, let me tell you this, Jason, there's no such thing as a Hawaiian pizza. Okay. Uh, Tony, Tony, are you there? Tony, are you out giving your mother an enema? Why, Tony, are you there? No, he's not there right now. A pizza has got pepperoni on it or hamburger or onions or you don't put, outside of tomatoes, you don't put vegetables. And, and actually, tomatoes are a fruit. Uh, you don't put, right what tell me tell me char, uh, pineapple's a fruit too don't tony no no you don't put a pineapple on pizza right tony mm-hmm. tony my brother just came tony <laughs> you, you don't put what oh actually you pine- know where i had pineapples uh, when my brother took me to vegas california pizza kitchen in the mirage i tried it flat crust he yelled that is not it. pizza now that's what he said to my brother. I was eating, it's not I pizza. Wanted to eat he wanted to treat me. I was eating the pizzas. They're trying them different. Pizza's got it cheese pizza. and it's he got meat pizza. and it's got all yeah. kinds of he's unhealthy like, things. Said, this is great. That's but, not fucking you know, pizza. Oh, I think I'm going to California. I can hardly wait to get a pineapple pizza. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> a he pineapple pizza. There's no such oh, thing as a pineapple pizza. pizza. There's such a thing as a piece of round crust with pineapple on it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I personally do like it, but then when I found out that it was the guy who invented it is like an hour away from where I live, I planned out a nice vacation. You know, I thought it would be cool, but yeah, COVID. Somebody had to invent. I guess somebody had to invent a, a, a pineapple pizza. Oh, I, you know, I don't like pizza. You ready for you that? Always, you always said that you didn't like the pizza. Is it well, too heavy? I tell, yeah, it, I, you know what it is. Even when I wasn't dieting. The crust is just, it, that, yeah. it's too Maybe thick. Thin crust I like mean. really thin crust pizza. Yeah, my brother you know? likes it. And I yeah. like sometimes the Chicago deep dish pizza, oh, like Pizzeria yeah. Uno used to have. Oh. You know? Where they put the cheese in it. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm telling Sorry, you. Sorry, Charlie. Chicago pizza sucks. <laughs> but <laughs> I, when, I, when, when, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, we grew up in North Beach in San Francisco, Okay. That's an Italian neighborhood. It's about as Italian a neighborhood as you can get mm-hmm. until everybody who was Italian moved out and the Chinese moved in, and then it was a Chinese neighborhood. But <laughs> it was an Italian neighborhood, and you had these old-fashioned Italian restaurants, you know, where you go in, there was sawdust on the floor, wow. and there was this certain smell of, like, wine and urine, you know. And, <laughs> and you would order a pizza, and they would make this thin crust pizza. The only pizza I ever knew was thin crust, the kind that when you ate it, you had to kind of double it over to put it in your Mm -hmm. mouth, right? Then all of a sudden, these pizza parlors come out, like in the Bay Area, like Pinky's Pizza Parlor, and they do this thick crust pizza, and I'm going, this isn't pizza, this isn't what I like. And I hated that idea, that doughiness, the big thick crust pizza. Thin crust, every time, love it. You know, terrific. But... The, in fact, the thick crust, forget it. You know. So what? Where was I saying? Oh yeah, there is no such thing as a pineapple pizza. <laughs> I was eating that shit. There's a piece of dough with pineapple on it. That's what it is. Now, now they have a taco pizza and a hamburger pizza. I think it's Domino's. Well, a hamburger pizza would be a pizza with hamburger meat on it, which is a form of pizza. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure they put some other seasoning on there, so it tastes like a hamburger. I do want to try that one so bad. That cheese. <laughs> it does taste like a hamburger. I've, I've had it. Have you? Is it good? Are yeah. you Are you a big pizza guy, Steve? You like pizza at all? Yeah. Yeah. What kind? Uh, cream. Uh, I don't like olives on it, but yeah. Um, I usually get uh, like a barbecue chicken. Okay. Yeah. See, it's Jets. meat. It can go on a pizza. Uh, yeah. Style, uh, style or even a, even a Philly, even a Philly beef style. like with the, It yeah. says on Solano Avenue in Berkeley, there's a place called Zachary's in which the very favorite thing there is spinach pizza. 
<laughs> spinach. There's, it's not pizza. Again, I like that because of the spinach, though. It's a piece of goddamn dough with pe- it was with spinach on it. Yeah. It's, basil. It's supposed <laughs> to have basil on it, not spinach. Yes. And, you know, but, I mean, um, uh, well, what the hell? You know, so. Yeah, I make, I make one. It's a fire roll. It's a Rolo de Fierro. Yeah. And it's like a pizza. You put all the, the, the uh, sun-dried tomatoes on there, and then you put cheese, mozzarella cheese, and then all the meats you want, and you roll it up, put it in there for, like, 20 minutes. Yep. Oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it, 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 it yeah, okay. Uh, I uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, uh, the pizza, you get a good pizza, and you can, they're terrific, you know. I like mm-hmm. mine. I like sausage, hamburger. Mm-hmm. What else do I like on it? Onions, mushrooms. Uh, I'm getting hungry now. Gotta get pepperoni on it. Ooh, pepperoni, pepperoni yeah. I, I'm not a big a fan of pepperoni. But if it's some kind of other sausage, I, I like go the old for fashioned it. pepperoni, the smaller ones. Yeah. Where they curl yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, uh, and then you know, I it, it, you don't want to order from Domino's. Uh, or, or what are you gonna say, asshole? I like Domino's pizza. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're paying pizza. It's good. Okay. And then Pizza Hut too, man. Pizza Hut's my favorite. Well, you know something? They may have gotten better over the years, but when I first went to them or tried them, they were uh, horrible. Domino's years ago. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Like they, they even had commercials when they changed up their uh, 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 ingredients and everything. Yeah, it was kind of like commercials saying how bad they were. The, yeah, the ad yeah. was kind of yeah. going like, "Yeah, we know we're shitty." Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you had the run. Bad last week. Yeah. You guys like Papa John's? I do. I wouldn't go to Papa John's because the guy was a rabid right winger. Yeah. Rabid right winger. And I wasn't either. And then I did have some one time when I was visiting my brother and I just I really wasn't that impressed by it. Yeah. Because I just I just didn't like that. It's in the, it, I would not do two one one thing I would you would never see me doing in my life, eating a Papa John's pizza while lying on a my pillow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the trifecta for two. Yeah, that's the trifecta of 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 uh, of assholeism. <laughs> And Steve, Jets is a lot better. Hmm? Say, so you guys might not have Jets pizza, but Steve has probably heard of Jets pizza. Jets is a lot better than... What's Jets pizza? It's just another, you know, almost like Papa John's, but... Yeah. Hmm. Just right. more of a Michigan, you know, Ontario. I think they're in Ontario. Now, isn't this a nicer discussion than talking about Trump? Yeah. Is it true that Rudy fought it today? I wasn't sure. I was no, it's... <laughs> Yeah. I just well, wait a minute. Here, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me put up the breaking news sign here. Yeah. Which is, the, you know, do you realize? Do you, do you realize that on MSNBC, the breaking news sign is always on. Yeah. It never goes off. Everything is breaking news, and what it's done <clears> is it's <throat> taken away the allure of breaking news. I know. You know. Anyway, it's the same thing on CNN. I I Not watch it. Uh, Wolf Blitzer, you know, he has his breaking news every time he comes back from a commercial break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the breaking news, what was it? Something that happened yesterday. Yes, or something he already reported 15 yeah. minutes yeah. ago. But uh, uh, where was I? I don't know where I was. I was just talking about... Uh, Pineapple pizza. Uh, well, we were talking about pizza. <laughs> but then I was going to mention something about breaking news, and uh, and then I I said, we, we haven't talked... You know, we're not really talking about Trump that much tonight, and that's good. I think it's, I think it's time we started weaning ourselves off of Trump because yeah. every night I would say for the last four years on this program, at least once that night, we mentioned Trump. Even when you don't, and, you mentioned that you didn't. And I'm going to tell you yeah. now that Biden's president, we're not going to, we're probably not going to talk about him much. He's just going to get the job done. You know, uh, he's not going to be begging for attention. So, you know, the the biggest thing is if those two people in Georgia become senators from Democrats. The Democrats. Well, let's see what happens there. Uh, Trump is going down there to to campaign for the two Republicans. And what I think, if he goes, 
he's going to make it worse. <laughs> well, because he's going to go down there, and he's going to he's going to he should be campaigning for them. He won't. What's he going to do? Phil Myers he's sent gonna... an attachment. Wait a minute, we have breaking news, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Phil Myers <laughs> sent an attachment. Wait a minute, what he sent an attachment? Uh, Barstool Pizza review, Del Fara mm. Pizza in Brooklyn. Really? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll That's check. That's the only it. reason why I want to go to New York is you guys always brag about your pizza. Yeah, like you said, Phil, you better. are allowed to call the show if you want to. I just talk to you once a week <laughs> so you can get it out of your system. You know. <laughs> but you could call on a discussion of pizza and not really irritate the crap out of us. Yeah. And I will say, I, I do like Phil on his one-on-one -on -one interview, yeah, but yeah. I miss him too. Yeah, I love, so Phil, I love if you want to call, if you want to call about pizza, feel free. <laughs> okay. Feel free. Uh, and if we happen to mention Trump, just pretend like we didn't even say it. Okay. But anyway, uh, where are we? So, uh, if he campaigns for them, he's he's going to complain. He's just going to complain about the election and keep saying it was rigged. He's just going to keep talking about the same yeah. same stuff he's been doing. Here comes Ray. I think it's Ray Renati. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is Ray Renati. Hi, Ray. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I, you know what I did tonight before the show? I was on what? I was on a Zoom meeting. Ooh. Yeah. With what is it? 210 people okay. all about uh, the sag after deal and the suing oh, I didn't go on. the suit they filed and so on i'm not allowed to talk about it because they would like to be just kept to everybody that was there but how you keep a secret among 210 people i have no idea uh but i've never been on a zoom call that large wow. and i thought i'd see a lot of well-known people there yeah D didn't know any of them yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know about that one. I usually go on them. Um, I didn't look at my email. Yeah, I, I ne you never know anybody. There's so many pe members. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, you think and, maybe and there's nobody famous who goes on. Yeah, well, you'd think that maybe one famous person would. Yeah, I know. You know, I, there's never it, any, or the, or they go under a different name and they don't turn their camera on. Yeah, yeah, uh, but you know, the, which goes to prove something that they've said many times is. Uh, most actors are out of work. Oh yeah, you know, uh, it's not oh, like absolutely. like everybody gets rich being an actor. So, no. Yeah, no. especially Ray Renati, right? That's for damn sure. Yeah, but you are a working actor. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in both. You, I'm in all the unions. I've. You're in SAG. You know, I've, done, I've done okay. I'm in SAG. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Actors Equity. I'm mm -hmm. in SAG Astra. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're in uh, yeah, if no. you're in SAG, you're in SAG after it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. There's a merger. The only thing I don't like about this whole thing, I mean, they are going to uh, Ed Asner is leading up a group of people who are suing the union to get our medical back, uh, and um, and they're also suing for money too. Um, yeah. Which will, you know, cost the union a lot of money, and then they'll raise our our twos, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, it, it, it they um, uh, they are suing to get our our stuff back, and it it's right. it's a worthy suit. It really is, you know. But I don't yeah. want to talk about it here because nobody really cares about actors yeah. and so on. And yeah. Maybe I couldn't be in that call because I I've been I haven't been able to get the insurance in about a year. Or so well, uh, that, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. asshole. Yeah. So I will have to say, and this is where I'm going to be the asshole, is you are the union. So when you didn't know about stuff, it's mean because you weren't participating. No, uh, they were holding things back from us, it looks like. Information that it, were when was we the didn't, last time you went to a union meeting? It had nothing to do with going to union meetings. They were, Everything has to go to do do. No, Everything no, has this to do decision. With going to union meetings because Wait, that's where stuff is that, voted that's on. That's your union. Wait a minute. That's your union, where you got guys who are big and brawny and work off the back of trucks. We're a bunch of guys who are just sissy marys who act and and uh, do radio shows. Okay, and they held this back from us. 
They, 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 yeah. the, the, the plan was having financial problems, and rather than come to the membership to try and solve the problem, they just did this draconian measure of just cutting out all the, all the medical plans. Hey, yeah, you know, I can tell you SAG-AFTRA hides things where, uh, as, whereas Actors' Equity, the stage union, doesn't because they had a similar problem, and they were really open about it right away. Yeah, and equi- uh, SAG after kind of hid the whole thing from everyone. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. A union is made up of its members. Well, I agree with you. The well, union is made up yeah. of its members, and and the the members that it's made up of right now are probably going to boot the whole trustees and and uh, board of directors out uh, come spring. You know, because we're livid about this. You know, so I mean, we're doing so. Look, we're doing something about it. We're suing. Yeah. Anyway, but the, like the the price that you were talking about is crazy because the prices that you were saying before for what you were getting through them seemed like they were just basically the regular commercial going rates that you could just buy no, when you're no. calling to the oh no 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 around, no I'm you know, I'm, I'm saying I, around here no I'm going out for the uh, the the normal rates I've had to go for because this plan doesn't exist now and so I'm going to be paying about four times what I was paying before. Oh yeah, yeah. At least four times before, but, but well, that's what I was saying. Oh. Like my mom, she's paying like two hundred bucks a month. I think for like the two of them for their, you know, supplemental. Yeah, but I mean, we, we were paying uh, about uh, two hundred dollars, uh, two thousand dollars a year for the two of us, for really good dental, two hundred fifty, twenty five hundred dollars in dental, and you know, we had great, uh, you know, uh, the the supplemental medical plan and all of that. And oh, and the, and the prescription drug thing was just amazing. I mean, my cost of, for prescription drugs went down by two thirds. Right. You know. Yeah, the insurance is like the insurance we used to get like forty years ago. Yeah, it, and, it's like it's so great. Yeah, and and yeah. what I had was a senior plan that was simply the addition to, you know, Medicare. Uh, and um, they did that for all senior performers, even though you didn't meet certain requirements over the years. As long as you'd been a m- member all those years, you were able to get the senior benefits. So. But, you know, um, they uh, what I don't, oh, I know what I was going to say, what, what I don't like about it is all these people that are complaining basically are the actors. Why? They, you know, and I'm after them. I'm broadcast. And uh, they don't seem to be really relating to me when I when I watch them. I don't relate to them because they're not talking in terms that I, as a broadcaster, kind of react to. So uh, it it's it's kind of, I mean, I do feel sorry for them that they, you know, joined up with AFTRA and made it a combined union because that's what caused part of the problem. But it could have been solved, and that's that's what's wrong. And they never told us that we had a problem until they were going to just do away with it. Oh. Josh, how you doing? Haven't talked to you uh, tonight. You've been a little quiet. What? I'm here. What's happening in the news that uh, that uh, gets you where you live? Yeah, yeah I'm slamming busy today, so. I'm... A little while I didn't even listen to news on the way home. I don't know what's nothing major happened today, did it? No, just the same old, same Not old. I know of whining and bitching. I don't think and compl- I missed anything. Whining and bitching and complaining. Got from a DACA, our- got a DACA ruling from one of the federal courts to reinstate some of that stuff. Yeah. Green, well, I, I, I think that's a fed, that's a fed accompli, isn't it? I mean, Biden's going to reinitiate DACA, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm not sure how tied up it is in the. What. You know what? One of the, the things he's saying on day one he's going to do: stop building the wall. Yeah. Phil's going to be upset about that. He liked the wall. Yeah, yeah, Trump. That was another Trump building project that you know. Got to mm. build the wall around the largest reservation. Around the largest <laughs> reservation. Yeah, all those natives, those brown people oh, south of the border. Oh, the brown people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. So um, uh, we're coming up on a holiday season here. Uh, are all of you going to now stay home and not do the normal holiday stuff, or are you going to go out and spread the COVID? 
I don't go nowhere. Huh? We're staying home. I know. What did you well, what did you do for Thanksgiving, Tony? We stayed home. My sister came over with her husband and the two my niece and nephew. That's it. And my brother. How do you know they don't have COVID? Well, my sister's a teacher, so she's and my net my um my brother in law, Darren, he has a CPA for the city and he is a diabetic. So he's been working from home because the doctor gave him the pass that he's he's yeah. high risk. Yeah. So they don't go anywhere. He doesn't even leave the house to go in the office. How I'm, I, I never asked you this, Brian. How much work do you do from home now? I go to work about six o'clock and I come home about 12 or one o'clock. Oh, okay. But do you... so, but then when I come home, I have meetings. I have like uh, China meetings usually later. Mm -hmm. Indian meetings are usually in the morning. So yeah. And then I have a one o'clock uh, appointment on Mondays that I always make sure I made that meeting. Yes, yeah. your, your your pop up show. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're yeah. yeah, but so, but you're physically, you're physically, physically there about six hours a day in the morning. Yeah. Okay, and then but when you come home, is there work you can do from home or what? Yes. Yeah, it's hard to do work here. That's why I like going in. But then I have meetings. I have Zoom meetings or yeah. Teams meetings. Steve, that. how how is how is your trucking changed because of the of COVID? I mean. Obviously, Nothing you can't much. work from home. What? Nothing much. Nothing much? Same. You just don't get out of the truck as much as you used to. Uh, yeah, I stay in the truck as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Jason? You, you know, you've got that. You, you do a lot of wiring and stuff like that, right? No, nothing has changed for me. I put on a mask when I go into people's houses. That's it. Yeah. I'm still going into people's houses, you know. Three, four, they, five every day. Do you make them wear a mask? Do you make them wear a mask? I can't. It's their house. You know, they're the customer. Do they're, they usually put it on? In Detroit, yeah. Suburbs, no. Hmm. Whoa. And, and that's kind of the opposite where you're talking about. It seems like in Harlem, you know, in Detroit, you know, it's primarily one race. They're all wearing their masks. You know, hmm. a, a lot more. You go into the suburbs where it's white people. You know, they ain't wearing the mask, or if they do it, they're, you know, they're wearing the chin strap or, you know, even just under their nose and everything. And, you know, and now you what don't want to ask somebody to put it on because they might stab you or shoot you. What about your superiors? I mean, do they make you, uh, they make you go to work, they make you go into these houses where people aren't wearing masks. Do they feel you're safe? Sure. They don't think it's real, it's fake. Because my question is, and I'd ask Brian this, are you just wearing a mask when nobody else is? Are you, does that make you safe? <clears throat> makes you safer, but does it make you safe? It makes me safer, yeah, for sure. But I feel more comfortable with it on right now anyways. Yeah, but... <clears throat> but especially, okay. especially like you said, the one that around the nose, so... But what I'm saying, when other people aren't wearing the mask, but you're wearing the mask, is that affording you 100% protection or no? Uh, I don't think a hundred percent, but yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a hundred percent, but for me, if, you know, I, I, if somebody's not wearing a mask, if I'm going somewhere, outside somewhere, I'll still stay six feet apart for sure. Now, Jason, do you have a union? You have a union, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We're the largest union in the country. How does your union feel about you having to go into homes where people aren't wearing masks? They haven't taken a, they haven't taken a position on it, huh? No, not really. Don't you think they should? No, uh, I don't know. But my union also represents the flight attendants, and you know they're all still doing their job. Oh, you know, but they're required to wear a mask, and the passengers are required to wear a mask. But you know, I know my company asks the customer to wear a mask if we're in the house. But you know, what can I say? Even the same thing with like with smoking. It's illegal for you to smoke on a job site. You know, I, I can't go into somebody's house and ask them to quit smoking because now this is my job site and it's illegal for you to smoke here. <sighs> Boy, that's yeah, good. We, we had Xfinity come right right in March, right during the, the first shutdown. Mm -hmm. And they came in and, yeah, we all had masks on. But they came in the garage. They only came into one spot. They yeah. wore masks. But out of respect, I wore masks too, you know. Yeah, well, when this first started, I would tell customers, what window do you want your modem to be by? <laughs> Yeah, you know, good. I'd run into that window. I'd drill my hole underneath the window, pull my wire back outside, do everything from outside, reach back in, slap my jack on there, say, here's your modem, plug it in. I'll stand here while you're doing it, make sure everything goes good. But, you know, I wasn't going into houses, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, you know, then I did realize, too, in a lot of the houses I went into over the years, I was like, you know, not a lot, but there are certain amounts. I'm like, why are there these telephone jacks right underneath the windowsills? And mm. it was during the 70s. Mm. There was the other flu during the 70s, and I'm sure people were doing the exact same thing, just drilling right underneath the window, putting the jack right there, and see you later. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. So, well, I mean, it's just a good a good question as to what uh, you know what is going to be the uh, the situation here with all of this, and and uh, uh, you, you know how we deal with a, a lot of these different things, especially when you're in a job like you're in. How about you, Kevin? Kevin, you don't have a problem, do you? Because you 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 work from home primarily, don't you? Well, I'm not working, but when yeah. I do go out, I just do the regular stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? How about I go you? see my mom? You know, yeah. I'm still getting tested, so I can go see my mom. But yeah, uh, Jeff. I need. Yeah, Jeff. Pamela still works, right? No, well, she she works for no money. Well, that uh, she's a lawyer. That's why. Well, yeah, but she's she's helping somebody to do a a startup company. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, but it's a free company anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, but she's pretty much doing things on on the telephone or on the cell phone and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. have to go any place. As far as that, she's the only one who goes to the stores. Uh, she asked me to go no place. I, you know, mm -hmm. just away from any potential risks. Right. Uh, well, then, didn't Biden say that he's going to shut down for breathing, no breathing for th for three months or something like that? No, he that no, no. asks for a hundred days. Asks for 100 no, he, what he's what he said is, he, look, he realizes that he can't make it the law. Okay, uh, to begin with, uh, it would make him very unpopular, and he's just saying, going to. I think he's just going to say, it's a, it's your patriotic duty. To do something about this, okay, and I think uh, I think people will probably react to that, you know, uh, and 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 uh, maybe it'll help. I mean, it's better than having a president who doesn't, who holds these super spreader events. You I know. think Trump already did his damage. I don't think Biden, by asking, can really do anything anymore. Well, and then there's the uh, the other question about the vaccine. How many people are going to take the vaccine? You know, and uh, the answer to that one is we don't really know. We don't really know yet. Uh, and the, can you then make a law saying you have to take the vaccine? I'll leave this one to Josh. Josh, you can't make a law saying where you take the vaccine, right? No, 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 not really. I mean, that's pretty probably get pretty complicated but to be force every American to take some kind of inoculation of course I mean there's yeah they're gonna have a pretty tough time with that yeah. I mean you certainly wouldn't be able to do it by any kind of executive order or right. something along those lines I mean at the very least it would have to be legislated in that that's going to be damn near impossible. Right. right. I mean, you know, and to have any chance of withstanding a court battle, it would, I mean, it would certainly have to be, you know, legislated, no executive order or anything. I mean, even at the state levels, they do have more of that executive enforcement type power. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it would be tough even there, let alone nationally. Well, here's here's the situation. They say that we have to have 75 percent of the country inoculated for there to become a herd become a herd immunity. Okay, so it's in the best interest of the country if 75 percent of the public gets inoculated. Is when it comes to a question of public health, can't we? Does that supersede certain constitutional guarantees? I mean. Public health should be a, a major concern. Oh boy, you're asking. Well, I mean, I, it's a big, it's a big question. That's, mm -hmm. it's a, 
Right. Yeah, it is. And I don't think there's a simple answer to it. I mean, there are a lot of things that might run counter to what we consider, mm -hmm. you know, constitutionally okay at the moment that, that would be good for society. But yet, you know, we still can't do them because it's just not, you know, it's not that easy. It requires change and we can't necessarily override yeah. it without yeah. legislation, et cetera. I mean, you know, we operated for a hundred plus years with, you know, slavery in existence, even though a large amount of people knew that it was constitutionally, you know, difficult and it was wrong and it would benefit, benefit society to change it. Yeah, you know, we still had to legislate it out. You know, first we had to fight a war, but I'm not trying to equate the two. I'm saying there are a lot of things we could change. So it doesn't just make it, you know, that simple. I mean, you know, we're back to kind of the 9-11 thing too, right? You know, if yeah. you give up some freedoms here in the name of security or whatever, you're, now you're asking the same question in terms of give up some freedoms in, in exchange for, you know, good health or whatever. But, you know, it's just not, not quite that simple. I mean, if you could suspend it at will, then the line creeps, you know, and creeps and creeps and creeps as to who decides what that is, you know, who can do it and when and all that. So, you know, that, that's why it's as difficult as it is. But, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't think we're going to reach a crisis point or something like that. But <clears throat> Jason? Man. So I, I was just curious on Josh's opinion on – do you think you could do an executive order to do uh, you get a $200 stimulus payment if you get a, a vaccination? I don't. Would you have control of the purse of. Be done by executive order. I mean, yeah. I don't think that's something that could be done by executive order. I mean, that's something that, you know, You'd would have, have to have control of the purse. Of the, you know, the, I mean, the, the, the government, the federal government through legislation i think could certainly pay people to perform a certain act just the same as they do in a tax credit or whatever you know yeah. i mean and they could just give it to you in the form of a refund it doesn't even have to be a credit sometimes they pass tax law that's given out in form of a refund so it's direct cash you know go to college and your first two years an undergraduate and you get a fifteen hundred dollar rebate or whatever i mean it's direct Mar that kind Mar of thing. marjorie so marjorie be done like that but not by executive order marjorie came up with an idea and that mm -hmm. is you don't get a vaccination unless you're wearing a mask you know and if you're going around all day not wearing a mask you don't get a vaccination okay but, and by the way if you get covid you pay your own bills but you know, <laughs> you know? That's question, though, though, too, Alex. what and, uh, with uh polio I mean, I'd have to look it up, but wasn't that almost mandatory for children in school to get a polio shot? It wasn't yeah, still. Was it mandatory? I don't remember. All I know is I was very happy to go down and get mine. I took the sugar cube. You still have your requirements at school to have I your vaccinations. You have your child in yeah, school. Yes, you do have to have vaccinations to school. send your kid to school, don't yeah. you? So what's the difference with a vaccination and for COVID? Yeah. But that, that's what I was thinking, like to tie it to your driver's license or something when you're saying non-legislative. How, how, how about if employers say uh, you can't come to work unless you've got had a vaccination? Yeah, they can do that if it's in the environment. And we'll dock your pay the days you're not at work. Who's well, thinking about it, Alex? Say if you were working in the, in the Maybe that might be into HIPAA laws. You, it, really? You, oh, you could do it remote then. I mean, they can tell you. They well, the problem, the, the problem, as we all know, with the mm -hmm. vaccinations, because I've been doing a lot of reading on this, is they all, every shot has in it a tiny little microchip. I already got mine from my flu shot, so they know where I'm at. Oh, right so, now. okay, so they already know. Yeah. They can already track you through your flu yeah, shot. Yeah, they've already got me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, because uh, uh, the latest thing I read was somebody in, I don't know. I'm one 5G. Of the, one of those groups. It was saying that, uh, yeah, there's a, gonna, there's a, uh, a microchip that's going to be in each shot so they can it follow like you around. Gates wants to know where we are. Like, he really cares about what I'm doing with my mother yelling at her. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's, no, to do. believe me, Tony, there is nobody out to steal your identity. Okay? No, exactly. They can have it. You know. 
When, when they had that second outbreak, I think China or somebody, right? They they had it mandatory that everybody get tested. By the way, you know, you know, they found out that before China, we had COVID in this country. When, did when you did read about that? September. No, it, it was China what September, outside. September of last year. They went wow. back and checked some blood tests that had been done for something, mm-hmm. and they found COVID in the blood tests. Yeah. Oh shit! So it's already here. Yeah. So enough with the China flu already. Uh, yes, yeah. Mr. President. We had a we had a neighbor who had it here in December. One of my son's <clears throat> friends. Mm-hmm. Last December, two blocks from us, she had it in December. And when did it first? Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. I'm saying it's absolutely true. Yeah. And we, yeah. when did it first appear in China? Like December. December. Yeah, well, this November, is September. November. September that they took a blood draws what? for something or another, and so they went back and checked them and found COVID in the blood draws. Yeah. Cross-contamination. Yeah, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying she got it from somebody here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So well, who knows how far back before. it goes? Who knows how far yeah. back it goes or where it came from? You know, it could have wa- traveled from somewhere to China, and that's where it exploded. Yeah, that is, yeah. You know, but of course, it's, as you know. But it didn't really oh, explode the because they were able to contain it in their okay. country. I'm going to do something now. Please, if, if any of you, if, I'm going to tell you something, and if any of you are epileptic, don't, don't listen, because I don't want you swallowing your tongue when I say this. It's been suggested by some Republicans that we call the vaccine the Trump vaccine. Oh, yeah. Is that true? Yes. 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 Absolutely. They have su- Geraldo suggested Rivera, it. Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo Rivera, right. Mm-hmm. Trump suggested it. Right, right. Jerry, Jerry Rivers. Yep. Is that what it's going to take to get rid of him? Is he got to get the Trump vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> the Trump then vaccine. I won't take it. You do know, however, that the vaccine from Pfizer, which, by the way, proudly is a New York company, did not take one penny from the government or from war, uh, Operation Warp Speed. The mm-hmm. only money they took from the government that. was as a down payment on the, the on, on, on the drug. Yeah, uh, but when risk. when when mm-hmm. Pfizer contradicted Trump saying they weren't part of Operation Warp Speed, he went apeshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were. That was a couple of weeks. Ago. I know. Yeah. But he, could, yeah. he, he just couldn't stand it when they said that. Yeah, it I, was the truth. I think ultimately yeah. one of the ones that, the one that's going to be the real winner of the race is whoever's works really well without having to be that refrigerated. Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson probably, you mm-hmm. know. But that's down yeah. the line. It was like you had the Salk vaccine, but then, <clears throat> that was a shot. But then you had the, the Sabin vaccine, which they put on a sugar cube Whoa. and you swallowed. I, that's mm-hmm. the one I took. And Ugh. it wasn't until that one that we really got herd immunity when it came to the, polio the johnson and johnson one is also one shot yeah is is it also one shot yeah. okay yeah. yeah and i'd be i'd be worried if somewhere through that process it it did not meet their freezing temperature and i know they have all the little things on it to make sure it does but if somebody covered that up and then there's a group of people that took that thinking yeah. that they're yeah Hey, listen, we've uh, run out of time here, but uh, oh, very nice. Uh, 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 Jeff Stein, thank you so much for being here. Kevin, always wonderful <laughs> to see you. Uh, Charlie, you didn't say much tonight, but just seeing your face there makes me feel calmer. <laughs> Josh Wheeler, thank you. Thanks to Jason, better known as Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to see you. You better learn how to change that, by the way. Tony, thank you so much. Glad to hear your brother's better. Brian, thank you. Say hello to Adrian for us. Okay. Is she out playing right now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Trucker Steve and sidekick Rocky, thank you so much. Look at little Rocky there. He's our new Adrian. Uh, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, uh, to Ray Renati. Thank you, Ray. It's twice this week. Glad to have you back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, why don't, you, why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, and then we will dissolve to me waving, and there they all go. Uh, it's been a good, it's a good night tonight. And actually, you know, once I start doing the show, I start feeling good. What can I say? Anyway, we'll be back again uh, next week. Uh, uh, we'll come back on Tuesday. Yeah, we'll be here at uh, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Or Eastern Time. I keep saying Eastern Daylight. Stop it, man. Eastern Time. 
Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And hey, be safe out there. And wear a goddamn mask, will you? Right, everybody. Oh, here, we'd rather have a Alec Bennett Ramble thing going.